what am I doing today? Hey everyone, today's video is going to be a St. Patrick's Day look. That's all I've got for you. Something utilizing Mystic Moss Green. It's perfect for St. Patrick's Day. It was a discontinued color. It was available when I very first started Sunagent three years ago, but it's coming back in stock for March and I'm so excited about it. So I'm gonna do a look with it because I feel like green can kind of be intimidating and I don't want it to be. So I'm gonna show you how you can use this and we're gonna call it a St. Patrick's Day look. Okay, so I'm starting off by putting, I've already got my skincare on. I'm going to use Silk Pore and Wrinkle Minimizer all over my face. I do a little pump on my finger and just press it into, call these my areas of concern. Problem areas, the areas where I have larger pores, a little more texture, some fine lines, I always like to press it underneath my eyes. It's just gonna fill in any unevenness and give you a nice smooth canvas for your makeup to sit on top of. When you're applying silk, you don't wanna rub it in until it's dry. I press it into my pores and I let it sit and be wet and then it's gonna dry down when it fills in the pores. So don't rub it in until it's dry. While that is setting and drying down, I'm gonna do my eyes. Look how cute my shirt is. It says Dreamer. Cute, huh? It's from Madewell. I'll link it below if I can find it. I'm gonna start with my eyes, but first I'm gonna put a little bit of Shadow Sense as concealer. I have like these random breakouts on my forehead. Like, what the heck? I get hormonal acne around my time of the month, but like my forehead is normally not a problem. I'm starting with Candlelight Shadow Sense underneath my eyes to cover up my dark circles. You guys, my under eye circles have cleared up so much and lightened so much by using this combo. I use the multivitamin brightening treatment and the dark circle eye treatment underneath my eyes. And it is amazing what it has done. I used to use like a super orange corrector underneath my eyes and now I can just use candlelight and be fine. I'm gonna go in with sandstone pearl shadow scent all over my lid to give me a nice base to play on. And I'm just using my fingers to pat it out. Okay, so when I first thought about doing St. Patrick's Day, I was gonna do like the bright, vivid green, but I've already done a look using palm glitter, which is a bright, vivid, sparkly green. I do have a holiday look that I use palm glitter for that would work if you like the bright, vivid green look. This one, because of my earrings and my shirt, it's kind of got like a more vintagey vibe, so that's the type of green that I'm gonna go for. I'm gonna put on some lip volumizer real quick. Let that soak into my lips. I'm gonna start with Shadow Sense Mocha Java on my E35 brush. Take a little bit off of the wand, put it in my crease. And I always bring it up a little bit higher, a little bit onto the bone. And this is gonna help make my eyes look more open and larger because it's like faking a crease. So it makes it look like my crease is up higher, which is gonna be like a larger frame around my eyes. The reason I'm doing my eyes first today is because we're doing a little more on the eyes. I'm gonna be a little bit more dramatic. And so whenever I do more drama on the eyes, I like to do them first. Now I'm taking the star of the show. This is Mystic Moss Shadow Scent. So I'm just taking a little bit of product off of the wand. The reason I have this now is like I said, it was discontinued. I was able to get some before it sold out, but I don't think I sold very much of it ever. Okay, so I'm putting this into the crease and on the outer half of my, uh, more like outer third-ish, half-ish of my lid. Trying to keep this space more open. This is the Mocha Java brush, no extra product. I'm just using it to blend the edges while I work. The Mystic Moss. So I'm taking it all the way across the crease, even onto the inside, just lower. I'm keeping it lower so you can see the gradient from Mocha Java to Mystic Moss. Not worrying too much about what this looks like down here. I'm gonna clean this up before I do my concealer. So I'm just worrying about mostly up around this area. Shadow Sense, I say this every time, but the key is to build slowly. Start with a little bit of product and add to it. And then you can see the motions that I'm using to lay the product down and blend it out. 
I'm doing these short like patting motions. And then to really blend and diffuse, I take a fluffier brush. This doesn't have any additional product on it. And I go all across to blend and diffuse. But to put the product down and blend it out, it's best to use smaller motions because if you go straight across, try to do windshield wiper motions with this, especially this dark of a color, it can skip and you'll get like little marks that you probably don't want. That is Mystic Moss. I'll probably end up going back in with more, but I'm gonna darken it up a bit by using I don't know do I can't decide if I want to like a bright lid or a dark lid. I'm gonna go with dark. I think I'm going to use smoked topaz shimmer on the lid. That'll be cute with my top. I'm gonna keep piling on some more mystic moss first. And I'm actually going to put it all over the lid now that I've decided on a dark lid. We're putting it all over the lid and then blending upwards. We oui as if you're doing this with me. If you cannot get your hands on Mystic Moss, this look would also look cute with Smoked Topaz as the base. It just might not be as green. I wanna darken up the outer edge a bit. So I'm taking the same Mystic Moss brush and using Onyx Shadow Scent, just like the tiniest little dab, and putting it here in this outer Actually, you know, I'm gonna take this domed brush instead. This is an E43 and use this. It's stiffer so I can guide the product where I want it to be just a little bit better. And then taking the Mystic Moss brush to blend it together and make it seamless. You guys notice that that's a theme. Like I started with my lightest brush and used this to apply Mocha Java and then I use this brush to apply Mystic Moss, but blended with my Mocha Java brush. And then I use a different brush to apply Onyx, but blended with my Mystic Moss. I like to do that because by blending it out with the brush that I use to apply the lighter color, it seems to just make it all blend a lot more seamlessly. That's why I like to recommend having um, multiple brushes so that you can do that instead of having to like clean off a brush and then use it for another color. I just feel like it works really well. It's easier to get that blending all together when you do it that way. I realize this is getting real messy out here. It's fine, I'll clean it up. Another thing you could do, and I probably would have done this had I had it nearby, but it's to apply tape. So like a washi tape or like scotch tape that's been stuck on your hand so it's not too sticky. Just layering. It's not showing up as dark on camera as it is in person. I don't usually do like a darker smoky eye. I'm liking it. You could totally leave it like this or like this pretty green. I'm gonna add just a little bit of smoked topaz shimmer to the inner lid area. And I'm doing that with this E55 brush. Off the wand. Smoke Topaz Shimmer, I'll show you guys. It has this really pretty, like, bronzy green look to it. And I feel like that makes it more vintagey looking, which matches well with my earrings and my shirt. I'm just doing a light, like, very light layer of that on top. So, still, the main color is Mystic Moss, but it's giving it a little bit of shimmer. So here's the cleanup. I take a wipe and I just rip. It rips really easily. So I just rip a strip off and then stick the rest back in. So then I can use this to clean up this area. It's not terrible, but you see, like imagine there was an imaginary line running right there. And when that's clean and crisp, that helps lift the eyes. But do you see how there's just like a drop right there? It's kind of droopy. It makes it kind of sag and pull down and just looks not as clean. And that is the same place that I would apply the, the tape if I had used tape. So it's not so harsh of a line. I'm gonna take this brush back. 
just making sure that I'm like brushing upwards. Okay, eyeliner. I want a sharp, crisp wing. I'm going to use our liquid liner for that. I'm gonna make it pretty dramatic. I don't normally do my wing that dramatic, but feeling it today. I really want Senegents to come out with a, like a felt tip or a brush tip liquid liner. This one is a brush tip, but like a, a pen, like a liquid liner pen. I've got my mirror down low, down here. So I'm looking down into my mirror. It's so much easier to do a, a liner when you're looking down into the mirror because it exposes the lid, but you can still see what you're doing. One thing I don't like about our liner it is not super matte. And so I always go over top of it with either Onyx or our liner pencil, which that's me being a little bit more high maintenance, a little extra. You don't have to do that, but I am gonna take Onyx Shadow Sense and just go right over the top of it so that it's not shiny. And it also helps to fill in any holes or like wobbliness or unevenness in the line and like the eyeliner that you drew. The reason that I'm not using just Onyx Shadow Sense on its own is because it's softer. It's a softer black. It's not as harsh. And so it is great still. Like I'll use it some days, but for this, I wanted more of like a bold, intense black line. I'm taking our black liner pencil and lining my upper waterline. This is safe for contacts, BT Dub. Except when you draw on your contacts, that doesn't feel the greatest, which I just did. I'm gonna do my face and then finish off the eyes. For the face, I want more coverage than just the tinted moisturizer that I usually use. So I'm going to use cream beige foundation today. This is the F82. It's fine. I just prefer a flatter top brush when I'm trying to build more coverage, but it'll work. It's a great blending brush. It's just not the best for stippling, but it's fine. It's going to get the job done. So this is cream beige makes sense foundation, like I said, in the original formula. One thing I like to do with our foundation is I like to let it sit and kind of become one with my skin. It's like the only way to describe it, I feel like. It just is like, I don't know, melting into my skin. But melting into my skin doesn't sound so great because it's not clogging pores or anything. I just like to kind of let it sit for a minute before I go in with all my other stuff. So now I'm going to do my brows. For our brows, I'm using our waterproof black brown mascara. And I'm trying a new brow brush today. This is the E75. So it's different than the E65. The hairs, how's it different? The hairs are a little bit longer. If you can see that. They're longer and it's thinner. It's thinner this way, which with my E65, once it starts to get kind of old, I actually end up cutting it anyway. So this is perfect. Let me start at my tail. See the difference? My eyebrows are microbladed, so you can see like the microblading underneath and the micro shading. It's faded a lot. So pretty much all I'm doing right here is covering up that old, old, old microblading. little dark. I feel like I had to do some extra covering up today. I don't like the way that my brows are fading and I should just get them touched up. I like them when they were first done. I like them a lot. I'm just lazy. It's just like not a good brow day. Okay, whatever. Deep tinted moisturizer for my bronzer. What I've been doing is I like pump a little bit out and get it on my finger like that. And I use my fingers like stamps. Doot. And doot. And the sound effects are necessary. 
exciting. Deep Tinted Moisturizer is my absolute favorite for bronzing slash contouring. That's what I'm doing. I'm kind of just doing double duty. I'm not doing like an intense contour. I'm just putting this bronzer in the places that I want to contour to. Deep Tinted Moisturizer is my favorite because it's more of a sheer coverage. And so it's super easy to blend because it's not super crazy pigmented. Because if I took a foundation that was this color but was like super pigmented, it would not blend well. But the Deep Tinted Moisturizer works because it's more sheer so it blends out really easily. One thing you can do, I'm going to show you today uh, because I feel like I need to do it just a bit. Do you see how my bronzer came a little low? It just kind of came too far down. What you can do is take some powder and either a sponge or like a baking brush. They have baking brushes. Um, this is an example of one, but mine has foundation in it, but it's a brush that's like really flat and has like a long edge, a long flat edge. But I'm just gonna use a sponge. This one is, I think this is just an Eco Tools one. It's a flat top one. I cannot use our powder for this. Our powder is too dark on me. So this is gonna be the only non senegence thing that I'm gonna use. Because for me, since I'm so fair, I need a completely translucent powder. But if you have darker skin than I do, you could use our natural powder for this. I'm gonna use the Huda Beauty, what is this? I think it's called the Cake and Bake, Easy Bake. Easy Bake. It's called the Easy Bake Loose Baking and Setting Powder. This is the shade Sugar Cookie, so it's like really clear. It's totally, it's like white. Senegents, oh, this is at the top of my list for Senegents to make a no color, completely translucent powder. Cause this color is perfect, but I still like the formula of our powder better. Anyway, you can do a line right there and right here. And then you can let it sit for a while. I actually prefer to wipe mine off pretty much immediately, but it kind of like erases and sharpens up that line. The longer you let it sit, the sharper and harsher it's going to be, which is why I like to erase mine pretty quickly so it's not too harsh, but it does clean it up quite a bit. Okay, now for under eyes for my highlighting and concealing. I love the formula of the Senegence powder underneath my eyes. It's my favorite powder formula ever. It's really smooth, it's hydrating, it absorbs oils without drying and like making your under eyes look creepy. And it has an anti-wrinkle peptide in it and so it actually helps to smooth out your wrinkles over time. Like I mentioned earlier, it's too dark for like just my skin and so it's also too dark for underneath my eyes unless I do some like balancing out. I always highlight my under eyes lighter than I want them to be because when I put the powder over top it balances out. So I'm taking light and white concealer on my finger. I do equal parts, mix those together, and then going into the under eyes. And I also highlight the center of my face, nose, Now I'm taking a Sigma F64 and blending all the concealer out. I prefer blending this concealer out with a brush instead of my beauty blender. I used to be a die-hard beauty blender believer, but with our concealer, at least on me, it just works better with a brush for some reason. Really getting that inner corner. But remember when I first did my eyes, I put my candlelight in there and then I put sandstone pearl all over the lid and I did kind of tap it out underneath my eyes too. I did that so that when I do my concealer right here, I don't have to get right up underneath my eyes. I'm just getting up and around. It's a little light, it's not too light. It's not like, I mean, it doesn't look crazy and stark white. However, when I go over top of it with our natural powder, it's just gonna bring it all together, bring it all home. So I'm taking the natural powder. I like to use my own brush for it, so I've dumped it into a container and I just use it to blend everything together. Do you see the difference that it makes from this eye to this eye? I still have brightness under this eye, but it's just more seamless and smooth. I said the powder, I'm obsessed with the powder. That's why I really want them to make it in a totally translucent powder. These Senna Gods, bring that on. I need blush. I don't like doing blush very often. 
I mean, I like it, but it's not like my favorite thing to do. I am going to use terracotta blush scents today. It's like a peachy, corally kind of blush. I'm just gonna take the tiniest bit. So I squeezed it out a little bit, taking the tiniest bit on my brush and blending it backwards on my cheeks. Taking a little bit of, this is the pearlizer, the original formula pearlizer. And I've squirted a little bit on the back of my hand. And I'm taking, this is my new favorite highlighter brush. It is the FO3. It's fantastic. It's such a good highlighter brush. And I'm just popping it on. Oops, I got way too much on my brush though. It's gonna be super glowy. So the reason I'm doing the original formula instead of anti-aging is the original formula has more of a golden hue to it and the anti-aging is more more cool toned more pink so i've got kind of more like the vintagey warm vibes going on not super warm but i wanted more of a golden highlight i'm taking this is the same brush that i used for mystic moss and then i also used it to blend out my onyx and no additional product, I'm just running the excess product underneath my lower lash line so that my concealer isn't so stark and harsh all the way up to my lash line. Inner corner highlight. I kinda wanna do something fun, like a pop. Okay, I'm just gonna take Snow, it's our white, on a E30, this is a pencil brush, and pop it on the inner corners. and underneath the brow bone. And then, you could leave it at that. I'm gonna go a step further, and I'm gonna take a color that is discontinued, so you may have it, you may not. If you don't have it, you could just leave it like this or take like sandstone pearl shimmer, but I'm gonna use gold shimmer, because it's more yellow, and I like it. And I'm gonna pop that right on top. But you could totally just use sandstone pearl shimmer. Oh, sandstone pearl glitter would be really pretty right here too, like a brighter. I just wanted like some extra on my inner corner. Like not my usual just snow, but I wanted to bring a little something more vibrant. I'm just gonna softly run that underneath my brow bone. I'm going to put on lashes. I'm gonna open some new ones. I haven't tried these ones yet. I love Virago Babe lashes. Ooh, this looks pretty. I got a new style called Scarlet. Well, new to me. It's not a new style, it's new to me. Ooh, I like these. You know what else would be pretty on the inner corner is some rose gold glitter. Now I'm gonna do mascara. I don't like to do mascara until after lashes because my natural lashes are very curly. And so when I put mascara on, they curl up and then it's hard for me to get the false lashes on. So I do it after, but I'm very careful to not get it too messy on the false lashes. I'm taking our mascara, our volume intense mascara. This is the non-waterproof version. You could use either one. I like the non-waterproof, especially when I have lashes on because it's got a tapered brush and so it's a little easier to get in there and get these lashes covered. Okay, I'm gonna do something that I don't normally do. I'm going to put eyeliner on my bottom waterline. I don't ever do that, ever. Because I feel like it closes off my eyes, but these lashes are so like, I feel like I, I can get away with it. What do you think? I haven't done this. I literally have not done this since like eighth grade. <laughs> I would close my eyes off so bad in eighth grade, which is like the tiniest bit of mascara, and that was it. What was I thinking? Okay. Oh my gosh, I love it. I love it. And what I love about that eyeliner is it's gonna stay in place all day long, so I don't have to worry about it like leaving black marks. <laughs> I'm gonna put on a lip color. I don't know what lip color. I'm gonna do like beige champagne. Just something simple, but it's warm. Maybe a little bit of Dawn Rising. I 
Now I'm gonna finish off with a layer of Dawn Rising. Because Dawn Rising has a little more like vintagey golden to it. I feel like it'll match my earrings really nice. Popping it off with glossy gloss. I am going to go finish my hair and then I'll be back to show you guys the full finished look. Okay, so hair is done and this is the final look. I love the way that it turned out. I know it's kind of more of like a fall green smoky eye. It's not super St. Patrick's Day, but I love it. And it makes Mystic Moss so, so wearable. So I hope you guys enjoy it. Be sure to let me know in the comments below what you think. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and also that little bell so you can be notified next time that I upload a video. <laughs> I'll see you guys in my next video. I always do that too. Oh, I'm doing... Hey everyone. I hate starting these things. Oh, but before... Squirrel. What was I gonna say? Oh, when you're applying silk, mostly just in case I mess up. Dang. Really wish this was a live video so I could get some feedback. It's green. It's like straight up green. My nails need to be redone. It's green. Super green. It's green. Did you catch that? <sighs> okay. Because it is green and it, it would probably be less green. <laughs> That's why I did what I did. And now I'm... I don't know why I did that. And... Freaking freak. I don't have a clean foundation brush. Thank you. Okay, well, this will have to do. Let's zoom in. Why wouldn't you want to be zoomed in for this? Duh. Get off there. That's the makeup removing strip that I left. <laughs> and next time that I post it, um, what else do I say? All the things, all the love. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I'll see you guys in my next video.